Citizens, it's that time you're officially in the Alert Zone. Welcome to the Alert Zone TV. I'm the Wizard Uncle James. I would love for you to become an active citizen of the Alert Zone, and you guys and girls already know how to do that. If you're 18 years of age or older and are able to be legally armed, practice your Second Amendment rights. It is not illegal under the Constitution. With that being said, let's get into it. I'm not giving a disclaimer no more. Uh, I have been giving disclaimers. At this time, we at a serious point in America where with the advent of social media and independent media, we've started to change the narrative about crime and make crime about bad people and not always about race. Uh, with that being said, The mainstream media for a long time has made one particular group of people the face of criminality in this country. And I understand for some people this is an uncomfortable conversation, but it's got to be had. Chicago, now Birmingham, Memphis, New York, LA, Atlanta. You guys get where I'm going with this. They love to talk about holiday violence. It pushes the narrative that when holiday time come, the 13 percenters get violent. You just constantly hear that. You hear that talking point all over. Follow me because I'm going somewhere with this because this, this is kind of, this is very important. And because people feel like, well, I don't live there, I don't have anything to worry about. Crimes of heinous nature keeps happening. And they keep saying this don't happen here, but it does. You just don't see it on the news. That's the only difference. It's not that it doesn't happen. Hell, there was an alleged hate crime that happened in the town I live in. Apparently a Native American was ran over by a guy and the guy didn't care for him because he was LGBT. That is just the word on the street in the little town I live in. <clears throat> I don't hang out like that. I don't know. But this guy and his girlfriend was charged with first degree murder. But that wasn't plastered all over the news. I told you guys I live in Iowa. I'm born and raised in New Orleans. I live in Iowa. Been up there 14 years now. There's a lot of heinous crimes. You guys don't hear about the body dismembering memorant that go on up there. You guys and girls don't hear about how many people get ran over on these farms by their partners from trying to drill holes into the side of these anhydrous ammonia tanks so they can make that underground meth. You guys don't hear about the millions of dollars a day that comes through the little town I live in from the meth trade from the opioid trade, from the drug. You guys don't hear about all that, but it happens. You know, for those of you who knew here, because the channel is really, really, really growing. For those of you who knew here, I always told people, I'm not a type of person that I'm afraid of having a conversation with nobody even if we don't agree. I told you guys and girls, I've sat down with people who said they could not hang out with me because of my skin color. I've sat down and talked to people who told me they remember the town's entertainment on the weekend was going to watch somebody be hung. And they didn't bat an eye. I'm not going to get into some of the other heinous stuff they told me. And I'll just say this last thing. I've talked to people that say they remember going into relatives' houses and seeing body parts on the mantelpiece and mason jars, because for the young people, y'all don't know, mayonnaise and all that come in plastic jars. That stuff used to come in glass jars back in the days. That's why we didn't have cancer and all that. Not all that plastic, but I digress. Mason jars with embalming fluid in it, and they would have a body part, a finger, an ear, a toe, 
uh, any piece of the body, uh, men's phallus, if you know what that means, uh, his penis. Yeah, they, they talked about that. And that led me to be going on places like, I go on Stormfront. I go on some of these other switches, 4chan and what have you. I've been on some of them just to read the message boards. And I understand where a lot of talking points come from. When I go to YouTube and I go into some of these videos about crimes that happen around the country, I go in the comment section and I just read the comments. And the comments will keep you updated on the vernacular. So you know what the terms mean. There was one that was real catchy. Two of them, actually. One I put on the shirt. For those of you who knew here, go back. I got a shirt of me wearing 13 percenters on there. So that's a way of trolling the 4chan uh, Stormfront crowd. Also, the usual suspects. You go to a lot of these urban crimes and you read the comments and it's all you see that the usual suspects the usual suspects that type of stuff and I'm of the mind frame of this because there's criminality in every group there's nothing wrong with pointing out our criminality don't throw stones from a glass house because when you hear Ponzi scheme you think of Bernie Madoff when you think of insider trading, you think about Martha Stewart and now Nancy Pelosi, who just haven't been uh, accosted for that crime. When you think about Ponzi schemes that destroy people's lives, Enron comes to mind. For those of you who remember Enron, guess who that wasn't? See, we, got, we can't be throwing stones from a glass house. Here in the alert zone, I want everybody to be safe out there. I am an advocate for the law-abiding citizen. That is who I advocate for. I don't advocate for criminals because they have their own advocates. If you're somebody that reformed your life, fine, I'm okay with that. I personally believe under most circumstances, a person that serves their time and pays their debts to society should be allowed to get their firearms rights back. There are certain circumstances I don't agree with, but, you know. Today, we had a school shooting in Georgia, Winder, Georgia, rural Georgia. 14-year-old Colt Gray. And I haven't seen the photo, but it has been confirmed. He's blonde hair and blue eyes. Not only that, and this is where it is very, very troubling. He was on the FBI's watch, FBI's, I'm sorry, watch list at 13 years old. He just pulled this. He's a freshman in high school. At 13 years old, he was on the FBI watch list because somebody at school or somebody in his family or somebody that knows him tipped the FBI off, they were afraid because he had already boasted and talked about planning a school shooting. They followed the post, they did the digital footprint and find out he did post it and he denied it. His dad had guns in the house. I don't know if he used any of his dad's firearms. But they knew this guy was planning a school shooting. And they let him go back to school. And look what happened. The saying is you keep letting the 13 percenters out of jail. But you keep letting these tragedies happen. For those of you who don't know today, earlier I saw a story out in San Antonio. And uh, to my people in San Antonio, I hope you guys didn't get affected by that flood, but I seen the flash floods in San Antonio and the damage it caused. Today in San Antonio, there was a guy in HEB that went to shoot up the HEB. They just stopped him before he could do it. 
he went in the store and somebody saw what he was about to do and chased him out of the store and law enforcement was there and they draw down and he opened fire and they didn't kill him but nevertheless he went there to shoot up H-E-B today what are you getting at him? what are you getting at why are you talking to I'm just trying to open everybody's eyes to make you see this can happen to us at any given time, any given place. I'm a truck driver. There used to be a time back in the days where guys and girls would ride around on exit ramps where they knew truck drivers would sleep three or four or five deep on an exit ramp and they would get up under the cabs of the trucks where they knew the beds was and fire shotguns into the bottom and kill drivers. Nobody expects that. When you go to make groceries, it's already hard enough that these groceries are outrageous in the price. And everybody's blaming Biden and Harris, and they should be blamed, but let me just say this for a minute. The corporations missed that COVID money. In America, and in America we showed them during the coronavirus that we were willing to pay three times the price for something. And those companies missed those record profits. It ain't just the Harrison uh, Biden administration. It's these companies. I read at the beginning of this year that the pork plants, the pork industry was going to cut back on pork, producing it so they can drive the price back up because they want those record profits like they got. We had people when 22 long rifle for a box was $19 and 99 cent for 555 rounds of Winchester 36 grain, 36 grain. When the coronavirus hit and everybody went out to start binge buying and people who had never bought a firearm before, the price went up to $70, $80. Now they $45 for a box. I used to get for 20, 20 bucks. We in the Second Amendment, those of us who really loved the Second Amendment and was really into firearms before the coronavirus, we stopped buying guns and ammunition and waited for the price to come back down like it is now. But nevertheless, back to the original subject. We had once again another school shooting. And the same thing came out. This stuff don't happen here. This stuff don't happen here. You can't keep having the same thing happen and saying this stuff don't happen here. You can't have young black boys running around the major cities, sticking guns in people's faces, taking cars from them, and say, but that don't happen here. Because you would be a liar. You can't keep having in small town, suburban, and rural America, these school shootings by young white males and then say, but that don't happen here. It can't keep happening and you say it don't happen here. It may not have happened in your particular town, but it happens in your type of town setting. These crimes that go on in these urban cities around the country, whether they're Republican or Democrat led, we can't say the cities is not under siege when this type of stuff keep happening. Well, guess what? If that is true, we can't keep saying suburban, small town, and rural America is not breeding these school shooters if that's where they keep coming from and they keep doing it. So much to the point that a 13-year-old kid was on the FBI radar. Do you understand what you have to do to have the FBI watching you at 13 years old? I read some of the comments where some of the people said that kids should have never been allowed to go back to school. Well, guess what? There's going to be a lot of hell to pay about this in the coming months and years. Because everybody's going to want to know why was not all the parents tipped off that this kid had already threatened the school shooting? You can't take this for granted. Ethan Crumbly, 
when he shot all them kids up there in Michigan was in class looking for ammunition for his gun and drawing pictures of him carrying out a massacre. He still wasn't sent home from school and look at what he did. Yeah, they blamed his parents for giving him the gun, but I feel like this. If his parents went because they let him have access to that firearm because the principal didn't send him home, the school resource officer didn't send him home, they need to be charged too because they let him stay on the premises. There are certain things you don't joke about. Two teachers and two students were killed. So I have confirmed now. There was one guy that was in the class, from what I heard, he was saying that his ears was ringing because the gun was so loud. I'm still not sure what he used. Uh, I'm going to assume it was hunting and it didn't hold a lot of rounds, but I don't know that. The FBI dropped the ball on this one and they dropped it bad. Let me say this. Doing gun to, doing YouTube videos, especially about Second Amendment, I know they watch us. All of us. All of us on their radar. They watch all of us. What we do. For those of you who talk about why you want to post your guns and all that craziness and people know what you got. When you go and fill out for a damn firearm, the FBI know instantly. The ATF, everybody know. You just went and bought a firearm. That ain't nothing new. When you swipe your card, if you pay with your credit card or your debit card for ammunition, you don't think those stores are turning that in? That you went and bought ammunition? These people know all this. When I talk about safety and protecting yourself and your loved ones, the FBI just let a bunch of children get traumatized probably for the rest of their life. There was a loss of life by a kid who was on their radar. That kid should have never been allowed to return to school. I'm sorry. Not when they had, they felt a threat enough that they had to track this kid down. Got a question. To Mr. Colin Noir, I'm just going to call his name this time. Appalachia High School, was that a part of that Chicago problem that you said America had? Because one of the people from the group and the thumbnail that you had on your video didn't pull this off. So I'm just curious to know. Here in the alert zone, we just call a spade a spade. There's a lot of people that have talked to me in the comment section and told me I changed their minds about things that they were gung-ho would never change their mind and never even think of. Let me say this before I get out of here. Per the FBI and local and state law enforcement in this country, every group, you are 90 plus percent more likely to be taken off this planet or violently harmed by somebody from your racial slash ethnic group than you are an outsider. We hear the term black on black crime all the time. The majority of these school shootings have been white males killing white students, white faculty. We've never heard black on black crime. I mean, white on white crime. We just heard crime. In the Spanish speaking community, you guys have your criminality. You have your sex trafficking. You have your smuggling. What have you. You guys have your murders. We've never heard Latino on Latino crime. 
we had a Stop Asian Hate uh, campaign going on. And yet, you had two mass killings carried out by Asians last year. We didn't hear Asian on Asian crime. Out there in California, the one who shot up the dance hall or what have you, because he wasn't invited to that party. And the other one that went up there to that uh, plant nursery and slaughtered a bunch of them Asians. I'm more likely to be harmed by somebody that looks like me. I understand that. What I want the rest of the country and the world to understand is you're more likely to be harmed by somebody that looks like you than you are somebody else. And I'll give you the big, simple reason. All groups' antennas go up when another group comes around. All groups get on more alert when another group comes around that's not usually around. When you're around your own group, when you're around people you know, usually you drop your guard. Most of the time, the person that harms you is going to be somebody you know. The number show is very seldomly a stranger. My dad got killed in 1987. I'm 45 years old. I was 7 years old. Don't know who committed this crime, but what I do know is it was somebody he knew to get that close to my dad to do what he did. The majority of these crimes that you see out here on the news and YouTube, think about it. Even the ones you read in the paper. Where you live, the ones they don't show. Usually those people know each other. Most people are not killed by random people. They're usually killed by somebody they know. From their group. These school shootings, no different. The Las Vegas shooting. Stephen Paddock, 61 dead. They were from his group. Cleve Olin Harris, their group. Nicholas Cruz, the Parkland shooter, his group. Lee Woodham in Mississippi, his group. Colt Gray in Winder, Georgia, his group. Sandy Hook, his group. You guys getting girls get where I'm going with this? It may make you uncomfortable, but that don't mean it's a lie. The truth ain't always comfortable, but the truth is the truth. We can't go to school without having one eye open. That's on alert. You can't go to the movie theater. You can't go to the grocery store. Hell, you can't even worship in church without worrying about somebody coming to shoot to join up, air the place out. As soon as you, the law-abiding citizen, that's able to be legally armed, understand that, the more we'll be able to stop these crimes. When these criminals see they're going to meet maximum and deadly resistance. When they see that, when they start seeing running up three and four on the car, it's still costing them their lives. They're not making it out of the neighborhood alive. And the word gets out, we better war amongst ourselves and leave these law-abiding citizens alone because they armed to the teeth, just like we are. And they're willing to send us to the cemetery. When we start showing there's going to be maximum punishment for these crimes, they'll slow down almost to a halt, to, to a stop. As long as we show, well, I'm here in this particular neighborhood and I'm safe, ain't nothing gonna happen. These things will keep happening. As long as you check your purse 
and hold it tight when you see a person from another particular group that's flashed across the TV but you let it loose around people from your group the more purse snatching gonna go on another damn school shooting did I call it or did I call it when I said we're going to talk about it across the board here. If we can get out there and talk about it's getting warm and the wolf pack is coming out, well, we across the board enough to tell you school is starting. The school shootings and the spree shootings seem to happen around the same time. When school goes in, the country goes mad. We have these kinds of mass acts of violence. You may not like what I say here. But pretty much you can't dispute it. I've never advocated for violence on this channel. I advocate for self-protection self-defense and resistance I never advocated for law-abiding citizens to go out there and harm anybody but I never told you to stand by and let somebody harm you because guess what we as law-abiding citizens got a right to exist too anywhere on this planet we have a right to exist too hit me in the comment section let me know what you think about this story and about the development that the FBI already knew that this guy was potentially going to do something like this and let him go. And just let me know what you think about this story and what I said in general. If you disagree with me, fine. All I ask, if you come in the comment section, be respectful. Till next time, stay safe, stay armed, stay on high, high alert.